Hello, this is Milady, and I am going to be showing you right now how to take those HDR images that you created with Nick earlier in Nuke and Photoshop and bring that into Maya to use to light your scene and also make sure you're casting the proper reflections into any objects that might be reflective. So right now I am in Maya 2017. Uh, we're going to be using Arnold for this tutorial. I'm going to start out by just creating a plane. So I'm going to go up to my Polygons tab and I'm going to create a plane using this shortcut. I'm going to scale this up. This is going to be my ground plane. I'm also going to create just a simple sphere. Uh, this will be the object that we're going to be placing into a photograph uh, to hopefully match the lighting using our HGR image. So to start, we do want to create a sort of dome in our scene. Every render engine might call this something a little bit different. Uh, I believe in Mental Ray it's called image-based lighting, but here in Arnold it's called a sky dome light. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to the Arnold tab at the very top, and under Lights, you'll see we have an option for Sky Dome Light. Alternately, you could also go to the Arnold tab up here at the top, and you have all your lights here as well. So this one that's a little bit to the right of the center is the Create Sky Dome Light. So once we created a dome, you should see in your viewport, we have this giant sphere that's completely uh, wrapping your entire scene. It's, it's creating an environment in our scene. So I'm going to attach that HDR image that was created earlier to this dome. So in the attribute editor, under the sky dome light shape, you'll see you have an attribute called color. So I'm going to go ahead and click the checkerboard to the right of that and say that I want to attach a texture, a file. And then in here I'm going to browse to that file. So I'm going to go into HDR images and I'm going to select that file that was created earlier, the EXR, and hit open. I'm also going to change the filter type from quadra quadratic to off. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I want my reflections to be nice and sharp. Uh, quadratic filter will blur your image a little bit. So if I look at our viewport, you can see now that, that sphere has that image on it. And if we rotate around, we can see the entirety of our image. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go ahead and hit render and see what this looks like. So we definitely are lighting the scene. You can see faintly that there's some shadows on the ground plane. Uh, it's a bit dark, but we can change the intensity of our light and fix that. So I'm going to go ahead again and I'm going to select the sky dome. So now there's two attributes in here that you can change to increase the lighting in your scene. You can either change the intensity or if you're used to working with f-stops, you can also change the exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the intensity. It defaults to 1. I'm going to boost that up to about 10. And I'm also going to hit render again. So now you can see we have a lot more light in our scene. Um, we can still see the shadows in here. So now let's say you wanted to put this over a photograph. I did take a photograph of this entire studio setup when we were taking photos of the HDR, uh, the bracketing for these different HDR images. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as my camera background. So I'm going to select my camera. Right now I'm working in the perspective camera. I can either select it here in the outliner or up here towards the top, this first little shortcut is a select camera. So in the attribute editor, under perspective shape, I'm going to scroll down until I see the environment tab. If I expand that, you have the option to change the background color or you can create an image plane. So under image name, I'm going to click this folder icon and I'm going to browse to the photograph I took of that studio. So here you can see the photograph of the green screen studio. And it's a now has appeared in my camera. So if I switch to wireframe mode, we can see this background image. So I'm going to go ahead and try and line up my camera so that ground plane resembles the ground plane in the background image. That's about close enough. I'm also going to raise the sphere up a little bit and I'm going to mimic that chrome ball that we had in the studio by adding a chrome shader to this ball. So with the ball selected, the sphere, I'm going to right click 
and I'm going to go to Assign New Material. Under Arnold, I'm going to choose the AI Standard. Now, if you're using Maya 2018 and you have the latest version of Arnold, uh, this will be called the AI Standard Surface, I believe. So now in the Attribute Editor, I'm going to change this from pre under Presets to Chrome, and I'm going to replace everything. I'm also going to take this ground plane because I don't want this to render in my shot. I want to actually use the ground plane in my image, but I do want to capture the shadows that are being created by this sphere. So I'm going to use a Arnold material called AI Shadow Catcher. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click and go down to assign new material. And then under Arnold, I'm going to pick AI Shadow Catcher. Now what this will allow me to do is it'll allow me to render this and you're going to see the entire background image, but you're also going to see the shadows created. You will not see this grid that's in our viewport, but you will see the shadows that are being cast upon it. So I'm going to go ahead and enable transparency to make sure that we don't see that grid. There's another option you want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and select the grid again and under the planes shape tab under Arnold, you want to uncheck this attribute called opaque. Now with that done, instead of using the Maya render view, this time I'm going to use the Arnold render view. Oh, I accidentally docked that. There we go. So I'm going to hit this little play button up here. And what that's going to do is it's going to load the scene into the render view and it's going to allow me to change things in the scene. And then I'm going to be able to see that update real time in my render view window. This way, any adjustments to the lighting that I make, or if I need to rotate my sky dome around, I can see that updating in here real time. So now looking at this scene initially, you can see that we no longer see our plane in here, but there are shadows in here. The shadows are quite faint, but just to give you an idea to make sure that you know that they're still there, I'm going to go back into the AI shadow catcher material, and I'm going to change the shadow color to something we can see, which is something like bright red. So now you can see that there actually are shadows being cast onto this plane. I'm going to change this back to black. So initially, what I'm seeing here is it looks like that the light from our dome is a bit too intense. So I'm going to go and select our dome light again. And I'm going to drop this intensity from 10 to about 6. So that's actually starting to feel better. Let's try 5. Okay, that feels pretty good. Um, you'll also notice that the reflection in our sphere isn't actually matching the background. We've got our green screen and the reflection to the right here, when in reality it should be on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip the HDR image that's on my, my sky dome. And to do that, I'm going to open up my hyper shades. I'm going to go to the top here, and you'll see this spherical icon. And I'm going to click that, which will open up my hyper shade. Now towards the top, top under the lights tab, you'll see your sky dome. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then down here, I'm going to hit this icon, which is pretty much a square with two arrows in it. And what this is going to do, it's going to map the input and the output connections of my sky dome light. So here we have the actual light shape. And then this is our image. And then here we have our placement for the image. So you can see in this thumbnail, the HDR image as is right now. I'm going to go down here where it says repeat UV. So the UV is pretty much the X and Y coordinates of our texture. So I'm going to take that U attribute and I'm going to switch that to negative one. And you should see the image in the thumbnail up top reverse. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that did to our render. So now we actually have the green screen on the correct side. Um, I feel like we should maybe see a bit more of this. So I'm also going to select the sky dome and I'm going to start to rotate that. So I'm going to hit E, which is the hot key for rotating, and I'm going to rotate along the Y axis. And as I rotate this, we'll do a big rotation so you can see, you'll see this updating so we can now see the green screen on the left side. So that was a bit too far, so I'm going to bring this back some more, maybe a bit more. 
No, uh, maybe, maybe I'll rotate it back again. All right. So now I feel like my green screen's on the appropriate side. It feels like the sphere is actually living in this scene. I could dial in the lighting a bit more uh, to make sure that the lighting intensity matches that of the background image. But in general, this is the idea of how to take an HDR image, bring it into Maya, light your scene, and make sure that you're getting the proper reflections from that HDR image. So thank you for doing this tutorial with me, and catch you later.